Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Chapter Number 7, Text Number 33 to 35. We just have 33 on the board. Lord Krishna instructs Uddhava. Forgive me for giving class today. Uh, Kavi Chandra Swami looks a lot better than me uh, sitting here. But uh, some of the devotees asked that I at least give a, another class before the festival was over. So by the force, uh, you have to tolerate me. Prithvi Vayo Akasham Apo Agnis Chandrama Ravi Kapato Jagara Sindhu Patango Marukrit Gadjaha Pitjivi Vayu Akatsam Apoganis Chadaram Ravi Kapato Jagraha Sindhu Pantango Marukrit Gatyaha Pitivi Vayu Akatsam Apoganis Charamoravi Kapato Jagraha Sindhu Patango Marukrit Gadjaha Pitivi Vayu Akatsam Apoganis Charamaravi Kapato Jagraha Sindhu Pantango Mukrit Gandjaha There's Two other verses here, so I'll read those also. Maru harhari no mina pingala kura ro rakaha komari sarakrita sarapa urna nabi supe sakritit etime guravo rajan shatu vi sati ashritaha shiksha viti bi ete sam ava shiksham uhat matnaha. Translation. O king, I have taken shelter of 24 gurus who are following, who are as following. We think we have trouble with one guru. The earth, the air, the sky, the water, the fire, the moon, the sun, the pigeons, and the python, the sea, the moths, the honeybees, the elephant, the honey thief, the deer, the fish, the prostitute, Pingala, the Kurara bird, and the chow, the young girl, the arrow maker, the serpent, the spider, the wasp. My dear king, by studying their activities, I have learned the science of the self. Repeat after me, O King, o King I, have I have taken shelter of 24 gurus who are the following, are the, following? The, earth, the earth, the air, air sky, sky water, water, fire, fire, fire moon, moon, sun, sun pigeon, pigeon, and python, and python. the sea, sea moth, moth, honeybee. Elephant, and the honey thief, the deer, the fish, the prostitute Pingala, the Kurara bird, and the child, the young girl, the arrow maker, the serpent, the spider, 
the wasp, the wasp. my dear king, by studying their activities, I have learned the science of the self. That's a one-liner purport here. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The wasp is known as Supesa Kriti because it causes the insect that it kills to take a beautiful form in the next life. I'm going to read the purport uh, just before this verse that clues us in with what is going on in this particular section of the Bhagavatam, especially in relationship to the uh, Brahman, the Abadut, that King uh, Yadu had saw this amazing personality who wasn't quite old, uh, rather uh, looking quite bewildered in the sense that the person seemed uh, almost ghostly. Very strange behavior, physically. But at the same time, Maharaj Yadu could understand that this was not just an ordinary person who was a fool or imbecile, that he had great knowledge. He seemed to be extremely detached. At the same time, was very actively moving around. And so there was some consideration, some question imposed up, uh, upon him, is what is happening? Why are you experiencing this ecstasy? Why are you happy? Why, why are you oblivious to just normal things? And at the same time, why do you seem to have it together? Well, commonly you seem to, to be uh, out of sync with what is happening in society. And so this uh, Brahmana, I'm sorry, this Avadut, he's explaining how he is so ecstatic, but how he's so attentive and learning from all kinds of people, all kinds of situations, all kinds of species of life that they are educating him and giving him uh, amazing knowledge. So from that knowledge, he has realization. From that realization, he has activities, actions of detachment, and of course, detached toward the mundane, but very uh, attached to the internal, to the ultimate goals that this human body is designed for. The Brahman said, this is text 32, uh, the translation, my dear king, with my intelligence, I have taken shelter of many spiritual masters. Having gained transcendental knowledge from them, I now wonder about the earth in a liberated condition. Please listen as I describe them to you. Report. The word buddhi upasritaha in this verse indicates you should take this down. Indicates that the Brahmin's spiritual master did not directly speak to him. Instead, he learned from them by his intelligence. All living entities who are inimical to the Lord, Lord Krishna, all living entities who are inimical to Lord Krishna glorify useless material things and they spend their lives in trying to lord it over. So Prabhupada is saying that his spiritual masters did not speak to him directly, but indirectly he was getting so much purport of understanding. Thus the conditioned souls try to increase their duration of life as well as their fame and their beauty by means of mundane religiosity, economic development, and gross sense gratification. King Yadu noticed that the saintly Avadut did not behave like that, did not behave ordinary. Therefore, the king was inquisitive to find out the actual situation of that Brahmana. In reply to the king, the saintly Brahmana states, quote, I do not consider the 24 elements of the physical world as objects of my sense gratification. And therefore, I don't consider accepting or rejecting them. Rather, I accept the material elements as my instructing spiritual masters. Thus, even though wandering through the material world, 
I am never bereft of service to, to the guru. Taking shelter of steady intelligence, I travel about the earth, constantly engaged on the transcendental platform. By intelligence, I transcend useless desires. Read, read that again. By intelligence, I transcend useless desires, and my ultimate goal is the loving devotional service of the Lord. Now I shall explain to you my 24 spiritual masters. So what we just read is the Avadut explaining his 24 spiritual masters. And in his explanation and categorization, he's letting us see how one can learn from everything, everybody, every encounter, every relationship. And some of these spiritual masters we see were not just in the human form, or in some cases were not even considered to be uh, auspicious or so favorable, like the python. When we want to learn, we want to try to see Krishna everywhere, then it means we are always learning and we're always looking to see, to understand, always eager to become. Like the Goswamis, we're always in the mood of where is Krishna? In the mood of looking, aspiring and anticipating more and higher association. Never complacent, never stagnant, never bored, never lacking service, never lacking chance to hear more about the Supreme Lord, never minimizing a chance to associate, never minimizing a chance to engage in all aspects of Krishna Kata. They were eager to see, but also knowing that we have to have qualities, qualifications to see. This is the drista versus the drasta. That we are usually trying to see, and we're saying in this uh, festival, that we should maintain this theme of trying to see Krishna in all things, trying to see Krishna everywhere, at all times. We're really trying to grasp a little better what is the Uttama Adhikari platform. We know we move from Kanisha to Majam to Uttama, but as we try to become something, we want to understand better what it's about and how is such uh, behavior. What is the kind of achar and prachar? What is the type of action and speech? And what is the sadachar? What is the correct and uh, healthy behavior connected with a particular level of consciousness? And so this seeing Krishna everywhere means that we are so eager to be and to uh, associate that even with what may seem to be marginal, what may seem to be uh, external, that we don't allow it, allow ourselves to accept that only. Yes, we are not to be in denial because we understand that Krishna does have these three aspects of his existence, the Baharanga, the Tasha, and the Antaranga. But we also realize that it's really nothing but the Antaraga, Antaranga, there's nothing but the Prema, there's nothing but divine knowledge, there's nothing but divine relationship, divine association, and uh, Sanatana, or divine eternal existence. We started off this festival, in the welcoming and mentioning, how Vishwanath Chakravati explains, because he wanted to drive everyone more closer to our Damodar, Radha Damodar, uh, Presence, you hear, they are the presiding deities. And as Chandra, uh, Kabi Chandra Maharaj mentioned, and he was traveling, how these deities have been involved in traveling more than any other Radha Krishna deities in the world, and actually are the most popular deities in the world in terms of the number of people they've given darshan. Look at all the places that it went. Well, let's, you know, we have big, big, uh, there were a lot of devotees coming in India and other places. But in terms of just making them, themselves available, not waiting for people to come to see them, but going out 
And so we were then sharing a little bit more about the Damodar Lila. We looked at three different aspects. Is that Maya so, Yasoda, uh, Krishna became angry when she put him down and went to give attention to the milk that was boiling over. So first proposition of concern was that service is always important. First, let's do service, but then service is important. But third, let's do quality service. Because in the case of Maya so, Krishna was angry at first because he wanted another kind of service. He wanted still to be in her lap sucking her uh, breast milk. The other two points we mentioned as we go into the class is that the rope was always two inches too short. And so many times we talk about this aspect, and we're sharing it another way, about the importance of effort and mercy. So Vishwanath Chakravarti explains that the issue that's concerned here is that Krishna is staying the same place. He's the same Krishna. He's not becoming bigger. Uh, uh, he's not running away. But the rope is too short. That it takes sufficient effort, mercy. So we have to try and continue in so many ways. But we have to be eager to get the mercy. And one without the other, there will be failure or there will be weakness, disturbance, and uh, disappointment. And so this is how we catch Krishna that we have the sufficient, proper, correct service, proper service attitude. We have put forth the effort, and then with the effort, we get, we get the mercy. So we read also from Bhagavad Gita, and, we, and we, we even shared, letting each of you read a verse, especially from the 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, and just how many ways that Krishna says, he can be seen, he can be known, he can be accepted, he can be appreciated. And just a tremendous uh, list of ways. Then today we're looking at how the Avadut is also giving us understanding of how he was able to have so many gurus, 24 gurus. It lets us become more attentive to the fact that learning is something that can always happen. And when we limit our learning, we limit our chance to see Krishna in all things, in all times. When we limit our learning, we limit our ability to catch Krishna. When we limit our learning, we limit our ability to accept and allow Krishna to prove what he has uh, declared. That as we surrender, he will ward us accordingly. And as we limit our learning, we limit our intensity. When you want to see something or someone First, you have to know that they are seeable, that they are available. Even in the mundane sense, we find some uh, popular or great person, and someone says, I, I want to go to see that person. People sometimes stand in line, or they pay huge amounts to hear someone speak, see someone perform, and sometimes they get only a glimpse. Or someone famous dies, people go just to have a moment of darshan, of viewing them. And so seeing someone or something that's important becomes so much of an internal uh, anxiety that I must also see. So as people come to America and they want to see and experience Disneyland. They want to go here or there. They've heard about these things. And so they're thinking about it, just as the great devotees of the Lord always thinking, or those who are becoming great devotees, always in anticipation, ha, Krishna is there, always excited. I want to see, I want to experience. I want the Lord to see me. And so I want to engage in proper effort that the Lord will take notice and the mercy will come and it will catch me and it will drown me and it will embrace me and it will protect me. And so seeing Krishna in everything and everywhere means a thing we've been talking about a lot, it means also less and less accepting the duality. When Uttara is being attacked by the, the Brahmastha weapon, and she is concerned, she is understanding that only Krishna, the supreme mystic Yogeshwara, can save her from this duality and the precariousness. And she cries out with great intensity, Pahe, Pahe, Mahayogin, Deva, Deva, Jagatpate, Nanyam, Twam, Abhilam, Yase. She cries out, you only 
can really eliminate and eradicate this duality because there is danger and there is suffering. But you are not dangerous. And you do not make your devotees suffer unnecessarily. As we read so many of the wonderful uh, verses yesterday, there were so many nice classes, the samskara class, which really helped us to look at all the major samskaras and to understand a lot deeper why we do these. And part of the essence of that presentation was that everything that is to be done is to be done for Krishna. Everything that begins, is some beginning, is to be done ultimately for Krishna. Krishna is the, is the, is the beginning, is the middle, and the end. And so, and then when we're looking at the verses of how to read Prabhupada's books very prayerfully and mindfully, then we had that wonderful interactive exchange exercise of the devotees have picking different verses and reflecting prayerful mood, contemplative mood, and then trying to share what it meant for them as well as for the institution or the community. And there were these amazing verses. And one person had the verse how Krishna was saying how he puts his devotees in often distress as a special way of sharing his above, special way that Krishna is available and is reciprocating. And so Krishna can even be seen in distress and anxiety. And we see, of course, Queen Kunti and many wonderful cases where the actual devotee of the Lord doesn't allow even what may normally be considered to be maya to distract them from what they have to do. Uh, Chandamari Swati mentioned uh, two days ago how when the bombing was happening in Calcutta, here, you know, very, very dangerous situation, war, and people's lives are at risk, and how Prabhupada was seeing this in an awesome way as Krishna's universal form. Even something as devastating as life-threatening situation to oneself or to others, Krishna's can also be seen there. Uh, in the Uddhava Gita, and this actually section of the Bhagavatam really talks about Krishna, who's now, who has arranged uh, for this curse, Yadudanisi has been cursed, and uh, Krishna is speaking to Uddhava. And he is telling Uddhava, because Uddhava is so dear to him, and Uddhava wants to leave. And Krishna is telling Uddhava how he is going to go, but Uddhava has some special work to do to, to remain. And Krishna tells Uddhava that you must see me in everything. Uddhava has his idea of how, what he wants to do at first. And Krishna is letting him know, you are very special, and you have very special work to do. To the Prabhupada, it's very special. He has very special work to do. Whether he is physically here with us or not, he wants us to see and to carry out his instructions by constantly remembering what he has told us. In the Prabhupada memory series, as uh, one devotee used to be a sannyas, and one point he was asking Prabhupada in the early days, uh, he's very attached to Prabhupada, more attached in some ways to his body, perhaps one may think. And he, uh, later that sannyas had trouble. Uh, what happened is that he asked Prabhupada at some point, this is really early in the movement when we really didn't think about this. See, the Prabhupada, what happens when you go, when you leave? Because the devotee had such uh, a personal association with Prabhupada. He was his servant. See, Sudama, uh, 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 Sudama Vipa Maharaj. And he mentions how Prabhupada said, you must see me in my disciples. So we can see and experience Krishna through his great acharyas, these wonderful Mahajans and Shuridars and Nityasiddhas. And we can see Guru through so many uh, chances to associate in healthy Sanghas. We see our Guru, whoever our Guru may be, we see our Guru only in the physicality or only even in his own structures, whether it's Vani or Vapu, then that is also limiting. We can only see Krishna in the arch of Vigraha. That is limiting. Yes, we come to get surcharge as we have this darshan with the Lord in the mandir. But we must carry that darshan in our mind. We must carry the mandir in our heart. 
And so Uddhava is being instructed, uh, don't be too disturbed, Krishna is telling him. You have to do the necessary. You have to take up the mood of sannyas, renounce, and go on to Badrag Ashram. You have a message to share and a life to live, to allow my own presence to live on, even though I will not be, I'm wrapping up my pastimes in this particular universe, but you remain for some time. Similar like when Krishna instructed the gopis, and he told him they must see him as the super soul. Now, not as Brahma Gyan, like the yogis who are trying to see Krishna as the super soul, and they're trying to become Krishna, they're trying to have the experience, often the experience over the savior or the service, or over coming to the platform of Shivanagrati or full surrender, and engage in all, all types of Mishra, Mishra Bhakti. So here they were to see Krishna in super soul, but more in the Madhurya, or more in the mood of seeing and thinking of one's lover all the time and feeling that the lover is there right in the heart. And we see Krishna, I think of Krishna as super soul. We also reflect on how Krishna is in every person. We constantly remind you of our tenet of trying to reflect on helping with, with healthier community is try to in, uh, interact with every devotee in the spirit that your own success or failure of your spiritual life is wrapped up in how you interact with each particular devotee. Well, this is another way of trying to say, see your guru in everybody. Another way of trying to say, see the acharyas in everyone, see Krishna in everyone. And even if they don't deserve that, you see them like that so that you deserve what all you can receive by the blessings of not going into so much of a conscience of duality. Even if somebody else is acting even in an obnoxious way. You don't have to only allow your, your perception and your interaction to settle in on that level. This has in the 24 gurus, one was learning from everything, even the prostitute. One was having chance to think of Krishna. And let me read this because in the, the uh, beginning of this chapter, uh, I can wrap up in one paragraph because it tells, uh, the later chapter explains how each of these 24 gurus gives some, some lesson for one to internalize. From the earth, let this summarize it. From the earth, he learned how to be sober. From the two manifestations of earth, namely the mountain and the tree, he had learned respectivity, how to be respectful, how to serve others, and how to dedicate one's whole life to the benefit of others. Try to, mindfully as we read this, like in our class of mindful reading and prayerful, just try to tune in all these different aspects of how one can learn, how we can see Krishna, how we can learn. From the wind manifesting in the form of the vital air within the body, he learned how to be satisfied with merely keeping oneself alive. And from the external wind, he had learned how to remain, to main, how to remain uncontaminated by the body and the object of the senses. From the sky, he had learned how the soul which pervades all material substance is both invisible and imperceptible. And from the water, here he's learning from the sky, from the wind, from the earth. Never a time that we can uh, be a, uh, away from a chance to learn. And uh, from the fire, he had learned how to devour all things without becoming dirty and how to destroy all the inauspicious desires of those who make offenses, or makes offerings, or make different offerings to others. He had also learned from the fire how the spirit so enters into everybody and gives illumination, how the birth and death of those who are embodied cannot be discerned. From the moon, the sun, the moon, the earth, the air. From the moon, he learned how the material body undergoes growth and dwindling. From the sun, he had learned how to avoid entanglement, even while coming in contact with sense objects. And he also learned about the two different modes of perception based on seeing the real form of the soul and seeing false uh, coverings. From the pigeon, you can learn the pigeon. From the pigeon, he learned how to uh, too much 
See, he's learning something positive in terms of patience, perseverance, and different things from different entities. He's also learning from some negative things that are there, but not accepting the negativity because he wants to see Krishna. You want to see somebody, you don't get disturbed if you have to go a little far. You don't get too disturbed if you have to pay too much to see because you consider, well, I want to see this entertainer, so if I have to pay $50 for a ticket, all right, let me pay because it's going to be worth it. I want to see this person. I may have to go three, uh, uh, go by two different trains, or I may have to catch a plane and travel for many hours, but I want to associate. I want to see them, and therefore I go. From the pigeon, he had learned how too much affection and excessive attachment are not good for one. This human body is the open door to liberation. But if one becomes attached to family life like the pigeon, one is compared to a person who has climbed up to a high place to fall down again. Never a time when Krishna is not there. Whether our situation is seemingly auspicious or inauspicious, never a time that what we do or what somebody else is doing or has done that we can't somehow use it to become more Krishna conscious, to be more eager to get Krishna's shelter, protection, to get his love, to even be more eager to have deeper understanding. Sometimes difficulties, confusions, setbacks, they give us the greatest chance to be more mindful for the person who's undergoing some, some challenge. Sometimes we take many things for granted and then someone is having a problem, now there's a time for the mother, for the father, for the disciple, for the student, to see, oh, how, how, how can I serve? What can I do better so that it will facilitate helping this person? What can I do better so it will remind this individual how much we are concerned? What can I do better so that it will allow me to be more careful in understanding how the mind and how the senses are so awesome, even more than we normally think, as we've been captured by them for many, many, uh, many different lifetimes. What can we do so that even like in a war situation, as Prabhupada was, the bombs were dropping, and he saw this as Krishna's universal, universal form. How can we carry out this instruction like Uddhava uh, was receiving? Krishna told him, see me. Yes, Uddhava, I am leaving. I am ending a particular pastime. I will not be around you as before. I will not uh, be available for the personal discussions and association. However, you must see me in everything. He didn't say you must see me in just a few special persons. You must see me only remembering what I told you. All of that's there, but he's saying you see me in everything. Krishna telling the gopis, so you will see me as the super soul, in such words. Everything has a purpose. Everything can be appreciated if we want to see. Here's, uh, let me uh, read a few uh, letters and a few references Prabhupada gives us. Here's one on, on Krishna being everywhere. Actually, Krishna is always, do you hear that word? Actually, Krishna is always guiding us through the super soul. But due to our forgetfulness, we do not understand that Krishna is friend everlasting. Your husband may disappoint you. Your wife may disappoint you. Your children may disappoint you. Your guru may disappoint you. Your, your own uh, mind and intelligence surely will disappoint you. Your body unequivocally will really disappoint you. But Govinda will not disappoint you. Radha Damodar or your deities many, many places you've come, they will not disappoint you. As a matter of fact, even what you consider somebody else disappointing you is really also a way that Krishna is thinking about you. You may have a wonderful, we had this nice ceremony of this year not looking so much at the novelty, looking more at perseverance and determination uh, and revitalization. So instead of having matrimony of new couples, we honored those who've been married for 10 years. And next year, we'll do 20 and 30 years. We're talking to some of the devotees who've been married now for 28, 27, 30 years. or the 20, I think, 27 years. So we want to give more attention to those who have 
persevered, struggled, been successful in certain ways because somehow whatever has happened or whatever is going on, they are still going on. And that's amazing. I like uh, 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 our wonderful entertainer was telling us yesterday that it, it, it's even wonderful to still be around. <laughs> Prabhupada himself is still like that. It, we should not be even so uh, distracted that someone leaves uh, the, the shelter or the association, but how some people continue uh, year after year, given that we are uh, in the arena of sense gratification. Even if we have, say we have a really, really difficult husband, really, really difficult wife or difficult children. Well, how do we see that as Krishna? Well, we see, well, Krishna is so kind. He's given me a really difficult wife so that I can be really fixed in understanding the complexities in household life, the complexities in anything that is not so much more focused on Krishna, to the complexity of the difficulties that come with certain aspects of sense gratification. So it can help you to be mindful, do your best, and be even more renounced and detached. While you are serving that uh, wonderful person, you can be even more detached and thinking of your real paramour, Krishna. <laughs> Have even more reason to, to be letting the mind go into a deeper place in such ways. Yeah, you have difficult children. You can see, huh? Be even more fixed and think, this child must have been uh, some associate of mine in the previous life. And this child has come back to teach me something very special. So let me make sure that I learn what I have to have to learn in such ways. And in many cases it is, because devotees are so unusual. And so, so many ways we uh, serve together. We come back in different ways to work on trying to see what has to be fixed. I mean, really, this is what the marriage is. This is what all of relationships are. Really, your marriage is coming together to be able to associate, to see how to repair and to fix what has to be fixed before you're able to engage in the eternal romance. So you better get it fixed. Fix it. Make it work. Huh? And enjoy it while you can. Huh? You put Christian in the center, then you enjoy. You enjoy the beauties of the experiences when you are uh, uh, having similar mind, uh, mindfulness, and you also enjoy when there's differences because it also reminds you, well, we are bigger than just these bodies anyway. You realize when there's a problem, you realize, well, I'm bigger than this. My wife is bigger than this. You have problems with brahmacharis, associating with brahmacharis, and you realize, oh, so this is, brahmachari is supposed to be renounced and simple and dedicated and also accepting so many things as Krishna's mercy. So what about that brahmachari you associate with? who you have so much trouble with, you're trying to avoid him, or so much trouble with that he reminds you too much of yourself or reminds you too much of what you don't want to think about or sometimes is an interesting mirror in another way. So that austerity can also be, oh, Krishna, you are so kind. Hmm? I was reading a little book the other day, and the title of it was, Thank You for Being Such a Pain. <laughs> I saw that book. I was immediately attracted to it. <laughs> You can thank someone. Babu, thank you. you. You are so wonderful. You are so amazing. You know? Sometimes you have, you have someone who you disagree with on practically everything. Huh? You, thank you for being such a way of helping me to look at myself in some ways that I never would. You know, someone who you have difficulty with gives you something very special that those you have similarities with cannot give you. I gave an example a couple of weeks ago. It's like in sports, you play tennis or something, you play some sports. If you were just associating with somebody who serves like you, who has very similar kind of mood, it doesn't create your skills as well as having to deal with someone who's very complex and do something different. Then you also get a chance to become more expert in what you do because now you become a greater master. If you engage in some sports, you, 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 you're, you're a fighter or whatnot. So as you defeat someone or deal with someone who's more difficult, your own level goes up. You learn so much more. So we learn from those who we agree with, they give us, can give us so much solace. We always need some people in our corner, huh? as many as possible, that help us with a support system, that allow us to be able to share our minds, pretty and exchanges of love. We can reveal whatever is going on uh, and feel that this person is concerned. And so we will go, so I'm explaining the importance of Vaishnava being able to share Sometimes there's devotees who don't have one single devotee 
who they feel they can really let that devotee know, Prabhu, you know, I am really in Maya. Prabhu, I haven't been able to chant 16 rounds in a few weeks. Prabhu, for the last couple of days, all I've been thinking about is those drugs I used to take. For the last month, I've de de developing desire to smoke again. I'm doing everything possible, trying not to purchase a pack of cigarettes. Someone who we can share that with. Because these kind of thoughts are maru, marusara. These are like demons. And one way to deal with the demon, a major way, it has to be exercised. And the way, one of the major aspects of that is revelation, is exposure. So much of demonic uh, 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 possession hides and then infiltrates and tries to take over. So when we have these fears and anxieties and problems, we really have to have somebody to talk with. Have to somebody to, to tell, Babu, you know, can we talk for a while? Babu, I'm having huge trouble with my son. Babu, you know, I, you know, I really don't have faith, much faith in my guru. I mean, I, I can't understand why he does like that. I can't understand why he always seems to be on my case. I really believe he just doesn't like me. Hmm. Just doesn't like the way I look. Babu, can you help me? There needs to be some way that you can share this so that you can get some feedback, get some help, get some clarification. The clarification may be the devotee says, Babu, I'm really glad we're having this discussion because I don't think Guru likes me either. <laughs> <laughs> Let's figure this one out. <laughs> maybe, we, maybe we got the wrong Guru. Maybe, maybe he doesn't like us because of something that's going on that we're doing. Let's, let's go find out. Let's, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. We bring somebody else in. The other person says, you know, I had the same problem, and I had it twice as bad. But I realized that Guru was maybe singling me out to help push me faster. And so he really was seemingly uh, being more uh, uh, attacking about what I did or what I shouldn't do. Community is so important that we have to get more out of being together than what we can get by ourselves. If we can't get in our communities more out of, of what is necessary for our spiritual growth than what we can get on our own, then our communities are so pseudo-community because there's no need for it. There's no need for us to associate if somehow we can't remind each other or get something out of it more than we can get by ourselves. Otherwise, we could all just be uh, bhajanandis, or we just uh, have our sacred comfort zone and go on. But we don't understand how much we are or are not Krishna conscious until we have the confrontation. Remember in the welcoming, I mentioned, I like to study people. I, it's, it's just a habit, I guess. But I was studying how it's traveling around, you know, all these countries and going to so many festivals, you know what I'm I'm like a festival junkie. I'm going this Ratiatra, this conference, and you know, just one after another after another. But I did notice, and I notice this in Mayapur each year, is that these festivals are major times when devotees get rejuvenated, devotees become more reflective, when devotees look a little closer at their past and sometimes look closer at their future. But it's also times that devotees often feel more remorsefulness, sadness, and anxiety. And I gave the example just like, you know, a school reunion. Some people are very glad to come back to the reunion because now since they saw their class 20 years ago, now they have, you know, a wonderful job. They have a big mansion and, and now they've got a lot of stocks and bonds and they're glad to come back and let people know, you know, uh, uh, I am doing wonderful. I got two really beautiful children. Look, here, here their pictures are. Somebody else who, you know, 20 years, 20, 20, 20, 35 years have gone by. And they've been divorced three or four times. And, you know, uh, the children have run away. And, uh, uh, and so many things. Husband hates them. They hate the husband. They're in, in divorce uh, uh, court right now. And so they even feel like they shouldn't come. Or they come and they feel very disturbed in so many ways. Notice your own minds when you have festivals, wherever you go, or even, even here. And notice how many things go on. You get happy sometimes about somebody's growth, happy about somebody, oh, nice seminar, nice workshop, nice class, nice kirtan. At the same time, your mind goes, oh, don't give him the, the microphone. 
That guy doesn't know when to stop. Jenny. Hmm? <laughs> oh, let me get out of here. <laughs> that devotee giving the class, what, what, what does he know? That girl giving the class, what can she tell me? She's Maya Devi anyway. What can she tell me? She doesn't know anything. After all, the scripture says, women are less intelligent. So I am very intelligent, and therefore I shouldn't be associating and listening to something or somebody who's less intelligent. So therefore, I should get out of here. Hmm? Only less intelligent people want to hear somebody who's less intelligent. So I have great intelligence. Let me get out of here. Hmm? So the mind goes to all kinds of things. Scripture says you should not hear a woman's voice. <sighs> Woman leading kirtan. Let me get out of here fast. I knew all along I heard Gideon was a crazy place, outrageous. Three sannyasis here. They got some woman giving kirtan. Let me get out of here. So the mind may go through all kinds of different reflections. And that's good. Because that gives us a chance to look and to consider. What are we getting from a community association? What are we expecting? And what are we needing? We have our special needs. And also the community has its needs. Only when both are in harmony do we have a healthy, healthy situation. Prabhupada says... Listen to this very emphatic statement. The more you make advancement in Krishna consciousness, you will see Krishna everywhere. Not only on the bank of the river, but also on the streets, the trees, the lampposts, and so on. Let me read that again. This is a, a lecture, it's a letter, I'm sorry. Prabhupada, 1967 in San Francisco. It's a, it's a letter to uh, Raja Ram, uh, 1967, December 21st, San Francisco. Uh -huh, Raja Ram. The more you make advancement in Krishna consciousness, that means the kirtan doesn't, the, one, the kirtaniya doesn't have to have a most beautiful voice for you to appreciate the kirtan. That's nice. It surely adds to it. The person doesn't even have to be uh, knowing so much, but if they're serious, they just read the purport, you have chance to learn something because the purport is Prabhupada and 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 and, and uh, uh Baladeva Bijibusan and so many others. And even if the person is trying, and you can think, wow, it's wonderful that Krishna is so kind, even this dodo can try to give a class. <laughs> How merciful that Krishna is. Huh? Somebody's trying to, to sing, and they really sing like a frog. And you can think, but how wonderful that even this person is crying out for Krishna. That frog voice is his cry, his cry, he's crying for Krishna. How Krishna is available for everyone in so many, so many ways. The more you see, and I'm probably explaining this, the more you see like that, you know, you know you are making advancement in Krishna consciousness. Actually, there is nothing but Krishna all around us. This is explained in Bhagavad Gita. He is the taste of water. I was going to speak on that today, thinking everyone was still going to be thirsty, but we had the, we had the break. I was going to use that as a theme. We were so thirsty. I was thinking, let me just speak about Krishna, the taste of water. How, how much we all want some water, some food. And the thing, if we could have that kind of intensity and that greed for Krishna, how much our life would be very, very sublime. And this is the, this is the mood of the gopas and the gopis. Such intensity, even when Krishna is there sometimes, and just thinking that he will not be around, and that they are experiencing such amazing altered states of awareness. Uh, he is the taste of water, the light of the moon, the fragrance of the flower, the light of the sun, sound of sky, the power, the strong. We read all of this the other day, and the, the welcoming. Every, Papa goes on, every stage of life, we can avoid the sunlight, the, the moonlight, the fragrance of the flower. Papa says we cannot avoid it. But one has to learn it, that there is Krishna in all of these varieties. Each time your child gives you a headache, each time you get ready to argue with your, your husband or your wife, and the, the negative aspect, think, oh, Krishna is appearing to me in a certain way. Krishna is reminding me a certain way. Huh? This has 
uh, the Avadut was learning from, you know, from the pigeon, learning how not to be so attached. And then when something beautiful is happening, Krishna is appealing to me, helping me, coming forth this particular way. Uh, simple, simply always chant Hare Krishna. It is simple by the influence of Maya, we forget the relationship of Krishna with everything that be. The mantra you gave us yesterday, what is it? What we call the mantra? Sri, say it for us again. Sri, Sri Hari. The holy name of holy name of Sri Hari is surely all that be. Yesterday we did an interesting exercise and we were chanting in response. The holy name of Sri Hari is surely all that be. It's amazing how the uh, synchronicity of all of these courses and presentations emphasizing it. All we really have is Krishna. But Krishna is everything. And Krishna is available everywhere and everything. If we are available and want to see him and experience him in everything and everywhere. Prabhupada says, I am very glad Krishna is helping you. Oh, the says, Simply always chant. He says, chant helps his devotee to see Krishna everywhere. Here's another letter from Sita Naranjan Swami. Because he was a brahmachari then. Los Angeles, uh, 29th, uh, 1972. If you are always remembering him by your activities and seeing Krishna everywhere, even in the heart of the demonic persons, then anger will never overcome you, being purified of all false pride. So even in demonic persons, that we should also have some kind of Krishna conscious reflection. Here's one from the uh, Veda base about artists. Seeing Krishna everywhere is not difficult. For example, suppose you are thirsty and you drink some water. When you drink, you feel much pleasure. Didn't we feel pleasure today? Those who had eaten anything or drunk anything? It's more difficult not drinking, isn't it? <laughs> Eating is a problem. But not drinking, especially we were active and you were chanting and the sun was out and you're moving around and you go all day. And uh, <laughs> sometimes when someone is breaking the fast from, drink from drinking, you're, you're drinking so fast that water is coming all down, it's jumping on you, and you're <laughs> you, get, you get a little choked. <laughs> you, know, you, just, you, just, you just can't get it down fast enough. So we are thinking Krishna can even be appreciated as uh, water. Because now it's a little more complicated because water is becoming a very dear. People have to buy water now. And in the near future, there will even be some wars and strategies, conflicts uh, from country to country due to war. The water table is going down so much. So this is a serious issue. But think of something so accessible as air and water. When you drink, you feel so much pleasure. And Krishna is the reservoir of pleasure. So that pleasure you feel by drinking water that is Krishna. Krishna states this in Bhagavad Gita, of course, 7 8. Rasoham apsu kantaya. I am the taste of water. So, so many opportunities are there that we can try to access Krishna. Uh, 